Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. My name is Lisa and today we're going to be stitching Rick Rack using Lazy Daisy stitches. And I have lots of fun ideas to show you. This is the fifth video in the Rick Rack series. I'll leave a link to the playlist below. Before we get started, I want to thank you for watching my videos and encouraging me. This is the 100th video on my channel and I've reached 6,500 subscribers. I am so grateful for every one of you who watch, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much. So let's get started. Here is a quick look at the supplies that I'm using. I have my sampler on which I've pre-basted strips of rickrack. I'm using Bohen Cruel Embroidery Needles in a size 7, which I have pre-threaded. Up until now, I've been using this Valdani Pearl Cotton in a size 12. But for the rest of this sampler, I'm switching to embroidery floss. This is a discontinued color of DMC variations that I had extra skeins of. I usually wind it on a bobbin and use it from there. Today I'm using two strands of floss. Let's go ahead and get stitching. Lazy daisies are a common embroidery stitch and easy to do. On this first piece of rickrack, we're going to start with a couple of simple variations. Let's start with a straight up and down lazy daisy stitch. I find that I like to work lazy daisies sideways or even upside down occasionally, so I have turned my work. You can see that I tried scooping the needle the way I prefer to do it, but this was pretty tight. In the embroidery frame, it's easier to use a stab stitch method. These videos are not really stitch tutorials, but let me show you how I'm doing this stitch. I'm going to place these in the peaks of the rickrack arches. I start with my needle in the center of the underside of the arch and pull it through. With the thread held out of the way above the arch, I reinsert the needle in the same spot the thread came out and bring the point up on top of the peak of the arch. Catching the loop of thread, pull the needle and thread through, leaving a teardrop shaped loop. Then take the needle down through the fabric just barely on the other side of the loop to fasten it. If I were to keep pulling it tight, it will look like a straight line, but I want that loop to show, so don't pull it too tight. It's definitely easier using a stab stitch technique on the embroidery frame. A small variation you can make with lazy daisies is to make a longer stitch at the end of the lazy daisy. It gives a subtly different appearance. Now let's try a variation on the straight lazy daisies. Instead of doing them all the same direction, we're going to alternate them working upwards on the peaks and downwards on the valleys. Again, I'm turning my work so that it's more comfortable for me to stitch. We're just going to alternate these, going back and forth all the way across. I'm wrapping that thread around so the needle comes over the thread and then when you go down, that's what sets the loop in position. On that one, I accidentally twisted the loop, making a twisted lazy daisy, which is another technique we could try. Fluffing it a bit with a needle helped it look a little bit more normal. Since this is just my experimental sampler piece, I'm going to leave it as is. If I were working on a block, I would remove it and restitch it so that it was more consistent along the entire seam. With embroidery floss, I find that even with two strands, it gives a slightly fuller appearance to the stitch than the pearl cotton does. Pearl cotton tends to sit higher on the fabric with a more defined look. Which thread you use depends on what you have and the impact you're looking for. There is our alternating lazy daisy stitch. For the next one, we're going to go diagonally across the rickrack similar to what we did with the whipped straight stitch. You can do this in either direction, starting under the arch and coming out in the valley of the next one. Let's 
let's make these slightly bigger on this one. I'm spacing the beginning and ending away from the edges of the rickrack. You might have a different idea of how you want to do it. As I'm stitching, I keep thinking of other ideas for stitching rickrack. If you're asking yourself, what about this one? Or what about that one? Make note of it and then try them out yourself. You may have completely different ideas than what I have. That's one of the joys of having a sampler like this to play on. Let your imagination run wild and see what you can come up with. Making these videos has been a series of play dates for me. I've had so much fun coming up with all these different ideas for stitching rickrack to a project. Let me tie this off and then we'll take a look at it. There is our diagonal lazy daisy. Because I've been trying to stitch quickly for this video, they aren't exactly parallel to one another. There are so many things you could do with this one. Think about adding a stem coming off of it. Or how about one of the pistol stitches we did in the last video? Maybe adding beads to it. There are so many possibilities. Let's continue on this idea of the diagonal one, but now let's add a second one going the other way. There's one going this way, and now I'm going to come right back where I started and make one going the other way. This rickrack is small enough that if I do these right next to one another, the stitches are going to run together and look almost like our zigzag chain stitch. And really, chain stitch is just a continuous pattern of lazy daisies. And lazy daisies are simply a detached chain stitch, which is the other name for lazy daisies. We'll stitch half of this rickrack like this, and then we'll make a change. Rather than having them so close together, we can spread them out a bit. I'm going to stitch these pairs in every other arch. Having them further apart allows me to make the stitches a little bit bigger since they have more space. Now we can see the variation that spacing makes on this line of rickrack. On this one, let's try what I call my little trefoil stitches, doing three lazy daisies together. Like with all my other trefoil or triad stitches, I'm going to start with one in the center and then I'll stitch the ones on the outside. We'll start by doing all three about the same size using the edge of the rickrack as our guide. That makes a really nice pattern. There are three trefoils done with all the stitches done about the same size. Now let's make them with a longer lazy daisy in the center. I'm going to make a really long one in the center coming out well above the top of the rickrack. But I'm starting from the same spot on the bottom, right near the center. Then I'll stitch smaller ones on the outside.
For the next variation, let's try it the opposite way. We'll do a small one in the center and larger ones on the outside. My thread's getting a little short. It's time to switch threads. Because Lazy Daisies are a bigger stitch, they definitely use more thread. I pulled that one a little too tight and you can see how straight it went. It's like it has a thick stem there. Stitch a flower on top of it and you have a nice flower with a couple of leaves. There are three different ways to do what I call trefoils or three lazy daisies in the arch of the rickrack. I'm sure you can come up with still more variations. Now we're going to do a combination stitch. In the very first video, we did a fly stitch, and I may have mentioned we would try another variation of that later on. That is what we're going to do here. We're going to start off just like we're making a fly stitch. I'm coming up at the underside of the arch, putting my needle down in the underside of the next arch, and then bringing my needle back up in the bottom of the center arch in between. Instead of doing a straight stitch here, I'm going to make a lazy daisy. I can stitch each of these to make them look like they're connected at the base. When I come back to make the lazy daisy, I want to insert my needle under the thread here. You could always add more than one Lazy Daisy here, like I did on my Crazy Quilt Journal project. This is still very much a detached fly stitch, but with a Lazy Daisy instead of the straight stitch, and that makes it into a combination stitch. Let's try doing it with two Lazy Daisies. I'm going to start off the same way. Instead of stitching the Lazy Daisy straight up, I'm going to angle it to the side. And then I'm going to make a second one angling to the other side and coming up underneath that thread, making sure I'm catching it in. Now we're going to try doing three. I'm going to stitch the middle one first and make this one tall. Then I'm going to make one going off this way. And then make one going off the other way. When I'm doing something like this, one idea triggers another. So we're going to try another combination stitch. We're going to put our Lazy Daisy in the middle like before. In the last episode we did pistol stitch. So what happens if we replace the side Lazy Daisies with pistol stitch? Let's try it. This is starting to get into a little more complex stitch because we're adding things to it. But when you look at most fancy stitches, what they really are 
are combinations of very simple stitches. So there's a lazy daisy with two pistol stitches on either side of it. Now you can start to imagine how you could change that up. You could have just pistol stitches. You could have a pistol stitch in the center or a cluster of pistol stitches in the center with lazy daisies on the outside. With just regular stitches, there's so much that you can do with them. The possibilities are endless, and that's the thing I love about crazy quilting. It allows you to play with and combine all these different possibilities endlessly. There's so much you can do with them. It's really amazing. I'm looking at this seam where we spaced the pairs of lazy daisies, and I think I want to try a different variation in between them. So far we've worked mostly from the bottom arch of the rickrack and up, but there's nothing saying that we can't work from the top of the arch to the bottom of the arch. So let's go the other way. This is one that's going to hide the rickrack a little bit as it sits completely on the rickrack instead of just crossing over it. On that one, my lazy daisies didn't start from the exact same spot. For this one, I want to go through the same hole for the other one. I think it will give a neater appearance. Let me tie it off and we'll take a look. Yes, that's much neater. That gives a completely different appearance. It's actually sort of interesting to juxtapose or alternate these different methods this way. Let's look at how many variations we've done with Lazy Daisies today. One, we did a straight stitch. Two, we did an alternating straight stitch. Three, we did a diagonal. Four, we paired them and stitched them adjacent to one another. Five, we paired them but are stitched from peak to peak instead of from valley to valley. Six, we paired but spaced them apart. Seven, we used same size trefoils. Eight, we stitched trefoils with a larger middle. Nine, we did trefoils with larger outers. Ten, we did a fly stitch lazy daisy combo. Eleven, we did a fly stitch with a double lazy daisy. 12, we did fly stitch with a lazy daisy trefoil. 13, we did a fly stitch with lazy daisy pistol stitch combo. So lots of different ones with simple variations. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, learning a number of ways to attach rickrack using lazy daisies in a variety of ways. As I've stitched, I've thought of so many other possibilities, but I'm going to let you come up with some of your own. Have fun and play with these variations and see what you can come up with. Let me know in the comment below if there are any other stitches you would like to play with in a similar fashion to what we've been doing with the Rick Rack. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Happy stitching and I'll see you in the next video.